The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome. Welcome to this time of worship and prayer, of listening to the old, old story and seeing how it can influence and overlap and help us live our life today. This is Bar Haven United Church. My name is Reverend Carla Van Allen, and it is so wonderful that we have found each other today, that we create this virtual circle. So wherever you are, uh, wherever you may be, whatever you're wearing, whatever you're drinking, welcome. It's wonderful that we are here. Today's service, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We have our children's time, but then during our, my meditation, um, I'm going to be talking about superheroes. So if you have some people in your household that love superheroes, I would encourage them to stay around because I think they, they may have some fun and they, they might enjoy today's meditation. I also wanted to invite you, of whatever age you may be, if you have, uh, maybe you go on a little I don't want to say vacation, but if you go someplace and you, have, you take a really nice picture maybe of a sunset or some animals or, or who knows what, or someone in your life has drawn a really cute picture of things that you're doing over the summertime and you want to share it, I want you to send it to me. My email address is bucminister at gmail.com and I will send it along to be incorporated into the worship service. So other people will get to see your artwork or your photography, and um, we'll just get to enjoy whatever you are enjoying this summer. So welcome, and let us worship. Okay. We begin our time of Sabbath by lighting the Christ candle. May its light and warmth remind us that God is present and available for all peoples. May we always choose the way of love, justice, and hope. May the light embrace us and claim us for Christ's work here on earth. Happy Amen. birthday! Every morning God calls you to be, and when you rise and as you become, God gives a promise. As I live and as you live, I will never abandon you. And each day we may respond. As you live and as I live, I will go with you. And each day we may say to one another, As God lives and as I live, let us worship and serve together. Loving God, Your desire for us to call us and equips us. Your love for us, Gifts us and encourages us far deeper than any regret of ours is a pervasive love with which you hold us anoint us in the vocation of healing and hospitality and bless us with fervor and our that our life's journey would stand as witness to your boundless gift in us in jesus our brother's name we pray amen <laughs> Um, come on in. Well, stay socially distant, but I know that uh, Coco so wanted to go out and, uh, and to play this afternoon, to run around in the field, but I don't know where he went. I think, I think it was something I said. I wanted him to clean up his toys and uh, kind of tidy his little, his little area, and he just, he had a little bit of a temper tantrum, and then he kind of ran off, and I haven't seen him for an hour. I've looked all around here, and I've looked in the choir room, and even in the sanctuary, but I thought I heard a little sound, so come follow me. Coco! Oh! I found him! Come here. Oh, Coco! Where have you been? I've been so worried about you. Oh, what's that? You're sad? Oh. Well, come, let's go down to my study and uh, you can tell me a little bit more about it. And, and your friend is here and he wants to go outside. Maybe? All right, let's go down here. 
So let's go down here. Oh, poor Coco. Come on down, Coco. Just watch yourself there. You can sit right there. Oh. Coco, I was so worried about you. Look, I got your favorite blanket. Got your blanket. And I got your favorite storybooks to read. See, he likes this one, The Miracles of Jesus. And this, I love this one. It's called God's Dream. It's very lovely. What's that? You're thirsty? Of course. I have some water here for you. You want some? That tastes good. Oh, here, your whiskers are wet. Let's try them. So what's what's wrong, Coco? You just felt um, a little, you felt angry? Yeah, and, and you just want to be by yourself? You feel, aw, oh, Coco feels sorry that he ran away. Well, I was really worried about you. I wasn't sure where you were in the church. But you know something? Right now, with things going on that we have to be socially distanced from people, physically distant, and we can't play with all our friends or have them over or go swimming even yet, we can have feelings that come up inside. We may feel sad for no reason. We may feel angry for no reason. Or sometimes we may just want to stay in our room or maybe watch TV when that is something we really don't do very much. You're glad that I'm here? Yeah? Well, what's that? You, aw, uh, Coco says that I'm being kind. Well, being kind is something that is quite easy to do. And whenever you love somebody very much, you show them kindness. So for example, I have your blanket and some water and your favorite books. And do you know in Jesus' time, there were five things that you would do if someone came to your house. Now, of course, things are a little bit different now, but I'm going to tell you what those five things are. One was that you offer a drink of water. Two, you washed the guests' feet. Yes, your paws, are they dirty? We'll have to wash them later. Uh, you greet them with a kiss. So only kiss the people in your family right now. And you anoint or wash their head and you offer them something to eat. Well, I'm going to get you some biscuits later. And what's that? That's right. Those are all things that you can... Um, help people that are around you to feel a little bit better. And especially during this time when everybody's sort of feeling it's kind of like a roller coaster of emotions, right? So what's that? If someone visited your house, you have some ideas? Oh, I can hardly wait to hear those. So what's the first one? You could offer them oh, some water from your dog bowl and you could give them a sloppy kiss. Oh my, that's a, that's a good one. And what's that? You could lick their toes. Oh, I think somebody, some people would be quite ticklish with that. And what's that? They could wash their face with your doggy towel with this one. Oh, oh, it does smell good. So you're in luck. So that would be fine. And what's that? You could offer a doggy biscuit. Wow. Those are all wonderful, wonderful ideas to help people in your life to feel a little bit better and to let them know that they're loved and even just petting them like this is a really good thing too. That's right. So I know that you're both going to run around outside. So how about as a way of just sort of calming ourselves down after all that excitement, how about we have a little prayer? Yeah? Okay. So at home, put your, uh, put your um, hands or your paws together and repeat after me. We'll bow our heads. Oh, awesome God, thank you for loving us and for making each of us special. Help us to be kind, help us to be helpful, and help us to be forgiving. Help us to remember that the gifts you give us are made to help our neighbor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What's that? That water perked you right up. And the little scratch behind your ears too. 
Oh, that's good. Oh, I think Coco is just ready to go outside and have some fun, eh? All right. Well, the two of you can go outside and just remember to stay um, six feet apart, but have lots of fun and just be back for dinner. Okay. All right, I'll let you down. You can go outside. Ever revealing God. Open us this day to your word. Open us to your way. Open us to your call for us today. Through the pages of scripture. Make your way and will known to us, and your call as compelling as it was for those first disciples long ago. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 12 to 23. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do not, do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the yeah. form of teaching to you, which you are entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For you, as once presented yeah. your members as slaves to impurity, and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Yes. So what advantage should you get then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift is of God is eternal life in Christ, Jesus our Lord. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of those these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. With God's help, may it be so. So I invite you to let us pray. In the old, old stories, help us, O oh Lord, to see our own stories unfold. In Scripture, may we see our struggles, our hope for a world that is open, free, and just for all. May your good news inspire us to follow your path. In Jesus, our brother's name, we pray. Amen. As I said earlier, I wanted to begin my meditation with a little bit of fun. I want you to think back to your younger days, to the days when summer break seemed to last forever, to a time of climbing trees, fishing in a local pond, and staying up late to catch lightning bugs. I want you to think about a time when you went to your local corner store with your allowance of money in your hand or the money that your Aunt Ruth sent you in the mail for your birthday. I want you to think back to the first comic book you ever bought. Now, if you've never bought a comic book in your life, or if you've never stayed up late with that comic book under your bed covers with a flashlight, then think to a time that you saw a superhero up on the big screen or on the little silver screen in your home. Maybe you took your children 
who are dressed up as superheroes out for Halloween, or maybe, maybe you've been lucky enough to go to Comic-Con, which is a comic book convention if you're not familiar with the lingo. Oh, and it's so much fun and so much more than just comic books. So I invite you to close your eyes and to think about your favorite superhero. What power do they have? How did they get that superpower? What did their costume look like? Did they have a sidekick or a secret identity? Now, once you have that image in your mind, I want you to think about why you like that particular superhero. What is it about that hero or their story that made you think about that superhero at this time on this day? And once you've thought about that, I invite you to, to put the service on pause, and if, they're, if you're watching this with some other people in your home, I offer you a chance to, to talk with one another about what your super, favorite superhero was and why. So we'll see you back in a few minutes. All right, now at home, I, you're not gonna look silly, but where are the superheroes? Where is Superman out there? Watch it, put your hand up. What about Wonder Woman? Spider-Man, Iron Man, the Hulk, Black Panther, Wolverine? I'm sure there's many, many more superheroes out there, and I hope you had fun sharing, sharing that in your rap, in your families at home. Now, Every congregation that I've been in, including BUC, I think just about everyone knows that I love Wonder Woman. I'm a Wonder Woman fan through and through. And one of my earliest memories was standing in the middle of my parents' living room and spinning around and around and, and trying to change my costume just like Wonder Woman did on, uh, on the television show in the late 70s. And I'm not ashamed to admit that two years ago in 2017, when the Wonder Woman movie finally hit theaters, I shed a few tears. One of those times when I was watching that movie that I shed a few tears was when Diana Prince, aka Wonder Woman, and Steve Trevor find themselves in the trenches in France, right on the front in, in Europe during World War I. And Diana Prince wants to to get up, to get out of the trenches, and to really help the men that are losing the, the battle that's being lost. And Steve Trevor grabs her and stops her and says to her, this war is a great big mess. And there's not a lot, a whole lot, that I can do about it, that you or I can do about it. I mean, we can go back to London and try to get the men who can. And Diana replies, I am the man who can. She sheds her cloak, climbs the ladder out of the trench to join in the fight. Powerful stuff. It's no wonder that superheroes were created in response to some of the most difficult times in American history. Superheroes are a pulp cultural version of heroes that have been around since the dawn of time. They provide a way for us to make sense of the forces around us and also a way of upholding our values and those things that we hold most dear. <clears throat> they are in many cases a retelling of Greek myths that reflect our hopes and our fears and reflect who we hope we are under pressure and adversity. Superman, the man of steel who would stop bullets, he was created in 1938 during the Great Depression by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. When Jerry Siegel was a teen, his father was killed by a bullet late at night at their family store when a person broke in and tried to steal a suit. A son couldn't save his father, but the son hoped to change the world. Superman's origin story is an alien crashing to earth mirrored so many people of the day. Immigrants, people from away, just wanting to be accepted 
and to fit in. Both Wonder Woman and Superman fought the Nazis in their early comic book stories. Wonder Woman's creator wanted a character that reflected, reflected the empowerment that many women were experiencing as they entered the workforce during World War II. Her character proclaimed that strength, heroism, and leadership were just not for men. Captain America was another wartime invention who was created to boost the enrollment needed to fight the Nazi threat. Captain America's true superpower was that he was true of heart before he was ever given any superpowers. His story showed that all people, no matter their size, could make a difference in this world. In the 1960s, with its fight for racial equality, the X-Men were created to tell the story of how people born as mutants just wanted to be treated like everyone else. Stan Lee explains in the two-part documentary called Superheroes Decoded that through the story of the X-Men, quote, I wanted to preach against bigotry, unquote, unquote. Through the crime-filled late 1970s and early 80s, the Punisher was born. And post 9-11, we have Tony Stark, AKA Iron Man, re-emerging on the big screen to find redemption after turning away from profiting from the war on terror. In Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, the Batman of the 1930s is reimagined as one who wrestles with terror, with fear, and with, and with questions about how much are we willing to sacrifice for our freedom. In this post 9-11 world, we also have Camilla Khan, AKA Ms. Marvel, the first Muslim superhero. Upon reflection, it would seem that humanity has always been struggling with what it means to be a human and how to live a good life. The most modern explanation of these questions are the myths surrounding our contemporary superheroes, but some of the earliest can be found in the Bible. <clears throat> we have always sought and continue to answer, find answers to the question of how do we live in a world where we are hated, and mocked for our beliefs, our sexuality, our skin color, or even our gender. We created superheroes because we think that in order to live, in order to have our voice heard, we need to have superpowers of some sort. But what if the reality is much simpler? In Romans, Paul reminds his audience that while God is doing some amazing things in Jesus, they still have to listen to what God is calling them to do. One day we may decide to become Christians, to follow uh, Jesus, but we still have to choose the way of God each and every day. Each moment we have to choose. If we choose God's way, will we truly live in the freedom that Jesus' resurrection has brought into the world? This choosing to do the right thing, even when we can choose to use our gifts to benefit ourselves, has a lot in common with the origin story of Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man. When Peter is bitten by a radioactive spider, his first thought is to make money and to profit from his powers. He signs up to become a wrestler, but in a selfish act, he lets a thief get away, and later that night, discovers that that same thief has killed his beloved Uncle Ben. It is then that he realizes the weight of the words spoken earlier by his uncle. Quote, with great power comes great responsibility. End quote. The more influence, the more power, the more we have, the more we are responsible for our neighbor. So then we may ask ourselves, what is the way of Jesus? How do we choose to live? What is the path anyway? <clears throat> In Matthew, we hear Jesus say to his disciples, this is a large work that I've called you into, but don't be overwhelmed by it. It's best to start small. Give a cool cup of water to someone who is thirsty, for instance, 
The smallest act of giving or receiving makes you a true apprentice. Like our superheroes, we too are flawed and broken creatures. But our choice to do good and to wrestle with the question of good and evil is where our journey of faith begins. Each of us has powers beyond our reckoning, and yet we, we more than often feel powerless and rejected. Like any hero, we too must sacrifice something to gain new life. When we give up trying to get the world to meet our needs, we realize that others have needs that are just as important as our own. Like the Hulk, the thing from Fantastic Four or Wolverine, there are those that seem so strong on the outside, but yet are so full of hurt, looked down upon by society, or have been shunned for their past or how they live in the present. In the words from Matthew, God calls us to love the unlovable, to feed and clothe the ones that frighten and unnerve us with their difference. The way of the hero begins with doing something that scares us. So over the summer, I encourage you to watch, watch with fresh eyes the superhero movies that are out there and to look for themes of hope and redemption, of people struggling with the question of good and evil, <clears throat> of how we treat the outcast and those that are different from ourselves. I truly believe that the old, old stories being retold to, the, to new audiences, the stories of hope and faith are being reimagined for little girls and little boys to see heroes that look like them and do great things in this world. The spirit is active, even in the pages of comic books and on the silver screen. The good news about our Bible message is that we don't need superpowers a cape or x-ray vision. We don't need an invisible plane or need to wear tights or have a utility belt or have a bat cave to hang upside down in. And we certainly don't need a pair of glasses to conceal our true identity as Christians. A Christian who is doing their best in this world to follow the way of Jesus the Christ. God has already done the hard part and we just have to take one day at a time and do the best we can by loving and respecting others. Praise be and thanks be to God.
Through our giving, we show our true selves. In our offering of time, talent, and treasure, we commit to bringing compassion, justice, and respect to the church, our community, and all to creation. In love, let us share. In gratitude, we do so in God's name. Like a cup of cold water in the deep of the night. May God's presence wake us up. Like a cup of cool water on a dew-soaked morning. May God's word be sweet on our tongue. Like a cup of cool water in the heat of high noon. May God's spirit shock us, renew us, refresh our lives. Like a cup of cool water in another's hands. May we offer Christ's cup and give even as we have received. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, and I conversation with God, I encourage you to, to go ahead and do whatever the Spirit calls you to do. Before we begin, there will be a, I invite you to calm your mind, find a place where your body is comfortable, and just take a few deep breaths before we begin to pray. So let us do so now. <clears throat> dedicated and unfailing God. You are always seeking ways to bring novelty, diversity, and wholeness into this world. We thank you for your tireless and creative spirit that is amongst us, always working with us to bring about justice and compassion. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Through him, we can see your awesome love and care for us. For these and for so many other things, O oh Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness and wisdom. Compassionate and sustaining God, we thank you that you hear the cries of sorrow and joy that our hearts make. With trust in your power and in your compassion, as we offer to you our prayers for our world and for ourselves, we do so confidently confident that your spirit is, is active and at work in this world. And so in love, we pray for the person that is beside us, or for our pets that are around us as we worship, and for those watching this service with us. We pray for those who are suffering in silence, whether it be in mind, body, or spirit. May they experience a healing that touches their very core. May they know that you are great and that you are near. We pray for those that have lost something dear this week, or for whom this week brings back memories of loss. For many, there is the added trauma of grieving, not only the loss of loved ones while separated by social distancing, but having that loss compounded by bigotry, racism, and injustice. Pain, frustration, and anger become overwhelming. Words are clumsy at times like this, but let us meet the Christ within, 
and the still center in each of us where you tell us the kingdom of God already is. <clears throat> we pray for those who are working to end racism and discrimination, advocates and activists, educators and storytellers, truth tellers and rebels. We celebrate and give thanks for those people, often of color and of many ethnicities, who confront this evil with strength, offering the transformative way through a firm, unswerving stand for justice, truth, love, and mercy. They remind us that we are all one family, created from God's loving heart, and while giving us free will, longs for us to choose to return and follow the divine way, not our way. We pray for those who identify as LGBTQ+. We pray for those who have known hardship and misunderstanding simply for speaking their truth and living as God has made them. May we learn to walk in solidarity with all of God's children. And, and over present God, we also pray for ourselves. We pray for those things that are on our minds and hearts this day. Help us to see your love at work in each moment of our lives. O oh, gracious one, help us to understand that you have blessed each of us with your grace. We don't earn our way into your glory, but we are called to embrace your grace and then to go out into the world to bring wholeness to others because you have blessed us first. Help us to listen for where you are doing great things and give us courage and the daring, the passion to jump in. We gather these and all of our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as to a mother brooding over us, as our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. As you prepare to go out on your day and to leave this virtual, virtual circle of worship, let us be mindful that God's love extends beyond what we can fathom. God's compassion knows no bounds, and in the light of these understandings, we go out into a hurting world, looking to bring peace and justice wherever we go. May the blessing of our Maker, the strength of our Savior, and the creativity of the Spirit move in and through you this day and each day of your life. And let the people say, Amen. May you be safe, may you know that you are loved, and we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you and keep you.